In this video we're looking at I2S for PDM versus analog microphone and the reason I wanted to make this was to discuss what different options we have available to us and what we can use in our projects, what are the key differences and how would you go about selecting one. I recently got a PDM digital output microphone and I wanted to illustrate what was the steps I went through to discuss this as well. I'm going to be using this in a, in a project of some sort and I'm going to be learning to it and hopefully hook it up and we'll get some good audio out of it. But coming from a new perspective, this can be quite tough and it's quite daunting. So if we step through this, as we all know, the analog microphone, it produces a continuous electrical signal. It's easy to use. It's typically low cost. You get all kinds of different shapes, sizes, you know, you get the small ones, you get it in a MEMS package. I have an image on the next slide. But what I wanted to say is it's, it all is quite depending on what you need. The disadvantages associated with this is that it is susceptible to noise and interference. If you imagine your analog microphone on a very small voltage scale, you can be quite close to, you know, noise could pick up, it could shoot through, and this could affect your, your signal. We don't have much noise immunity, and, we're, and the ability to process this signal can be quite difficult in a sense. So we need to be quite careful into what we do with it. Take say I've got an image of an electric microphone and you know they, they all come in different shapes and sizes and whatnot. But this is something standard I think most of us have seen. It's what's commonly seen on our hobbyist projects and such forth. And you know these things only go for a pound, maybe even less, you know. They're not too bad. Again, they have different properties you need to be aware of, so it really depends on what you're looking for. So I would probably use this application of a microphone if, for example, I wanted to learn something or I wanted a simple speaker of some sort. Maybe I just wanted a simple microphone to boost up whatever I'm amplifying. Maybe the distance isn't that great and maybe I can connect the microphone output straight to my amplifier, straight to my ADC to process that signal of some sort, but again, it really depends and you might need an external uh, signal processor to actually do something with this analog uh, signal depending on what you want to do and stuff. There's loads of tutorials out there to what you can do. An I2S microphone. So this makes use of the I2S protocol which stands for I think it's inter inter sound or similar to it's not to be confused with um, I squared C and this converts sound into digital audio data using the I2S protocol. So again it is a digital output that's one of the things. And with the digital output, we reduce noise susceptibility. Now, the reason for this is because we only have them in ones and zeros at that point, to put it simply. And, you know, we have some quite tolerances with it. We also got higher signal quality with it because it's already in that digital format. And we can interface with a DSP or microcontroller and analyze this. Now, keep in mind that we cannot just use any microcontroller or DSP or whatever you want to use with this. This requires to have an I2S peripheral. So an ESP32 does have an I2S peripheral. Some versions of the STM32 may have an I2S peripheral on them. It really, it's really up to you. You need to be careful and look what you're looking into. These are typically more expensive and they consume more resources and power. What do I mean by this? It is because we have actually three lines. So we actually have the select, the clock, and the output. As well, we have a word select over here. So maybe you get four lines dependent. And you know, there there is a word shift. So depending on, I believe it's the left or right, if you have two microphones or, or maybe using a speaker of some sort, you have the clock signal and you have the output of your data. So a three would be the bare minimum. So it really depends on your board. And typically these use up a bit more power than our next one, the P PDM, which we're gonna look at. So it's really quite dependent on what you need on your project. These, I would probably say are quite more common and that maybe people are a lot more aware of them compared to PDM. It's the same thing with PDM microphones. They convert a sound wave into a digital bitstream. They have a digital output. Same thing, we have a higher noise susceptibility, generally lower power consumption compared to I2S just because we're using two lines. Though the disadvantages is require extra peripherals to filter and process the PDM. And before I begin, PDM stands for pulse density modulation. And in principle of this is we have bits, so our sound wave converted into bits of this, of this sort. So you could see on the higher peak, we have more ones compared to the lower, things like that. And we can generate this or acquire this this sound waveform. So when I say by requires peripherals, you may need an external codec or a some sort of some sort of extra chip or hardware that you may need to actually analyze this data. You can't just connect it directly into your microcontroller and you'll need something ex extra, some sort of middleman or maybe your processor does have it. So you do need to be quite wary of it to ensure this can this data can be read and filtered out correctly correctly. 
there are some distance constraints so this usually samples above 3 megahertz i believe just due to the way the 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 protocol if you will works so if you imagine if you're having a long stretch of wire in that pdm and you're having higher higher and higher higher frequency you can imagine you'll pick up some unwanted noise or capacitance or such down the line so you want to be quite wary of how far is your microphone to this device if it's directly on the board and you have it all one small piece be shouldn't really make a difference though keep in mind when you do when you are selecting one these factors to consider if i've not mentioned them already is the audio quality what are you looking for exactly so for example you may you may be okay i want a bit more higher audio quality so i may choose an i2s over a p and a pdm over an analog of a microphone that's not to say you won't get amazing quality out of an analog but let's just take as a general a guideline for that power consumption are you quite scarce for power so if you are you may be using you may want to consider an analog or a pdm depending on the power requirements that you want to use and the chips that you're using build material cost so again with the pdm i mentioned that you have a higher bump cost with the extra peripherals or hardware you may need so if this was a quite a concern then you may opt to choose an analog but maybe you need a more you more you need more gain you need a gain amplifier any more components you may not go for that so you might opt for the i squared s because you have your microcontroller is directly connects to the i squared s protocol and you can just use the data already as it is space constraints it's the same thing with the bomb cost how many components extra do you need then for example i squared s you have minimum of three lines the pdm you have two lines to route and everything so it depends again what do you need operational environment how how robust you need this signal to be so if it was a really noisy environment maybe i wouldn't use an analog microphone if it can pick up too much unwanted noise i'd probably opt for a more a digital microphone instead so things where noise immunity and signal accuracy are critical i may just choose an i2s microphone or a pdm microphone or maybe if i, if I need the power efficiency i'll go for a pdm microphone but again it all comes down to budget costs how much does your project actually allow for you to choose is it quite critical and it's everything's just a trade-off in the end so it's really quite dependent and as much as i hate to give this answer as much of engineering is that it's quite dependent on your application with budget power constraints and your whatever you're familiar with also if you're more of a hardware expert you may be more familiar with an analog approach if you just want to avoid programming the ones and zeros you may even choose you will still go with that analog approach but say you're a bit more comfortable you have someone external who can program the firmware software whatever then you think okay this makes sense to choose an i squared s or a pdm microphone instead because i can do the hardware i can do the pcb layout and whatever and i have someone else externally who can program these for me and therefore i have the, i'm not forced to go down the option of just a purely analog sort of device that's all I wanted to cover for this and to discuss what is the summary of between choosing I2S PDM analog microphones. There's a lot of good information out there on the protocols themselves if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of it all. So I highly suggest having a look around and taking a look and if you do find one you like, look into the protocol itself or, or even just analog, understand the microphones construction it will help you deeply understand into what you need to do and how maybe your signal will be affected by it.